Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and today's session is going to be focusing on crossing and finishing. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into part one of this week's session, we're working on crossing from the fullback. Okay, so the fullbacks overlapping or underlap and run for then two players, so two strikers to get into the box to finish. In terms of the setup and equipment for this week's session, we have 14 players, 12 outfield players and two goalkeepers. If you don't have two goalkeepers, you only have one. That's fine for the first few parts of the session. Once we get into the small side of the game, it would be good if you could get a parent or an assistant coach um, to act like a goalkeeper. If you can't do that, then you could create areas in the goal where the players can score more points um, because they're going to be scoring from across, so we want it to be first time anyway. So if they score in the corners of the goal, it could be two points uh, down the middle maybe not even a point and maybe the top score top corners uh three points maybe in between the middle of the goal and the, and the corners could be one point okay in terms of the equipment for this week balls bibs and cones perfect if you do have poles or mannequins they'd be perfect to use as well so that the players can use them as like acting against defenders but if you don't have them it's fine okay you can still use the cones which are more than adequate in terms of the setup for this part of the session Okay, we have 50 yards of total width. From the line here to the winger is 25 yards. From the winger to the fullback is 15 yards. And from the fullback to the end line here is 10 yards. In terms of the width, we have 20 yards centrally, okay, and then 10 yards either side. But obviously, the fullbacks can then go around here as well. So give it take a little bit more on the outside. <clears throat> How the play is going to start is the coach is going to play into one of the uh, midfielders. The midfielder will play across the striker here, or attacking midfielder. They will then set the ball to the other midfielder, who then looks to play a ball into the winger. This will then trigger the fullback. Okay, so where's the fullback going to go? If the attacker, the winger, receives the ball out here, okay, we want to do an underlap and run. Okay, so that means the timing of the ball has got to be so that the player can run onto it. With the two players then getting into the box for a cross and finish so we want them to be working on their runs okay so one player is going to come into the front post okay can we get around them and go to the back post so make sure they know where each other's going to go timing of the runs as well is important not being in there too early but if the player receives the ball in here the winger to then open out they want to go in the overlap play it in front for a cross and finish want the winger to take no more than two touches okay so it might be a touch to set the ball um, to then cross or they might be meeting the ball running onto it so they can take the power off the ball there to fizz the ball in at pace for then the attackers to get onto it and score. After the play is finished the fullback uh, will go and, be to, go and be the winger, the winger goes and beats the fullback and then the two strikers in here will go and join the back of the queue here and the two centre midfielders will go and become the strikers. So there's plenty of opportunities to work on the passing in here and then the finishing and then in here working on how can we receive the ball to play through to somebody, uh, where are we going to receive it from, and then our runs to then cross and finish. We will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session. Moving into part two of this week's session, we're now looking at moving the ball through midfield to get the ball wide to then score. So the setup for this part of the session is we have 50 yards of total uh, depth again. From the start line to the striker is 20 yards from the striker, so the attack midfielder is 10 yards. From the attack midfielder to the centre midfielder is 10 yards. And then from the centre midfielder to the end line is 10 yards to give them a bit of space to receive the ball and be able to play one twos and get round and into space again. We have 20, uh, 20 yards of width centrally and 10 yards either side, so 40 yards width. And obviously we can have some more width on the outside for the full backs to get around. So we have the eight reds in the middle and the two blues on, uh, the four blues out wide, sorry. The play is going to start with the coach. Coach will play into the central midfielder, so it's going to alternate each time. 
Central midfielder will play into the attacker midfielder. Okay, so you want the movement from them to be either side. Okay, they're going to set it back to the central midfielder who's going to run onto the ball. When that ball goes back to the central midfielder, that's when we're looking for the full back to make their run, to run onto the ball. Okay, then we have the striker and the central attack midfielder making their way into the box. So the central attack midfielder is going to be more of the, the late run. Okay, so once they play the ball back, they can start to get on the move. The striker's got obviously going to pull out here. Then they're going to, going to decide, can I, am I going to go front post? Am I going to pull off to the back post? Which then means the attack midfielder go, well, if he's going to the back post, that means I'm just going to drop in here to the front post. If a ball comes in here and I can attack it, great. If not, if it's going to the striker, where can I position myself maybe for a knockdown? Or if he has a shot and the keeper saves it and it comes back out, can I get the ball to finish? So it's the time that the runs to make sure that we're there for when the ball's coming in. Same to the fullback. When we're making our runs, okay, making sure it's quick, okay, we're accelerating quickly, making sure we're not more than two touches, okay, so when we're getting the ball, it might be one out of our feet to run onto, or we might just meet the ball and play a nice ball across uh, to, for the uh, striker to finish, or it might be that we take a touch, we can play more of a loft across, okay. After the play's finished, the fullback will join the back of the queue. Okay, and the next fullback will be ready. The centre attack midfielder becomes the striker. The striker goes to the back of the queue here. And then we have the centre midfielder going into the centre attack midfield position. So they're just moving up one place at a time. And then we'll go to the other side for the play to start. Okay, so we want lots of repetitions as well. All the players get different roles. We just want the fullbacks staying there because that's where they're going to be on a match day. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the first progression for this part of the session. Now moving into the first progression for part two of this week's session, we're now looking to play into the centre attack midfield there on the opposite side to then switch the play. Okay, so we're going to get different movements up top as well. Okay, so the same thing will happen again. The coach will play into the centre midfielder in here. They will then open out to take a touch forward. Okay, so then play into this attack midfielder, so they're playing to the opposite one. The attack midfielder will then look to set the ball back for the, for the centre midfielder to run onto. So now they're going to be playing to the opposite wing. Okay, so now we're going to switch the ball to the opposite winger. So it might be more of a lofted pass, might be more fizzed in. So the winger's got, oh sorry, the fullback's got to be maybe wide to start with so that they can come onto the ball. And also, if the ball's going to go, going to be travelling a bit higher, they might have to start uh, further back so they can take a touch on the chest to then go forward. So the, the movement now for this centre midfielder <clears throat> is just that they will go into here. Okay, so after they go, they'll still end up back here, but they're going into there at the start. In terms of the runs from the strikers, we're not going to be two from the same side. The centre attack midfielder from this side is going to go, and the striker is still going to be the same from this side. So we're getting two separate runs. So this striker here has got a chance to run all the way through to the front post, or time the run to the back post, which then gives the attack midfielder a chance to arrive late in here. Or then if the striker comes in here like that, they can get around into the back post to finish. Okay, so we're getting different movements again from the two players up top. We might get some deeper crosses this time. If the switch of play does end up to the, the fullback's feet a bit further back, it could be one to chop the feet to then whip the ball across into the box, into the danger area for the two players to attack. Or it might be in front of them to get right by the byline to cut it back for the two players arriving in to finish. Again, we want the players to be aware of obviously, you know, the goalkeeper could save it and come out. So if, you're not, if, you, if the cross isn't coming to you, where can you position yourself to get the ball? Okay, so the play is still alive, so if it hits the post, hits the bar, hits the keeper, whatever, can we finish it instantly? All right. So, after the play is finished, full back, goes back, into here, attack midfielder, becomes the striker in here, striker goes to the back here. Okay, so the only change we're making is that the, play, the centre midfielder in here will go into the opposite attack midfield position, but that's about it. Okay, and obviously I'll turn it again, ball will go into here, okay, set back, play that wide into here, this striker will go with this attack midfield there as well. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the second progression for this part of the session.
Okay, so now we're moving into the final progression for this part of the session. We're now going to be using the, uh, our full back as a player to play in to get their movement again. And then we're going to be playing the final pass from our attack midfielder. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we're going to play into the coach, uh, sorry, into the uh, centre midfielder. The centre midfielder will then play into the full back, so we're looking to maybe have a little double movement, okay, to play into here. What we've got here now is that this, the other full back who's not obviously attacking at the time, it's just going to act as a defender in here, just going to shadow a defender, just so that the movement from the full back and the touch and movement from the attack midfielder is going to take it into space. It's got to be a bump. Be a bit more intricate, okay? Not too easy. So we want to tell them where we want to pass the ball. We want to pass it in behind the fullback, okay? So we might entice them to come in with the, come into the or the or the fullback here, or go towards the attack midfielder, which means they've then got to take a touch away to play through. But carrying on with the drill, so we start with the centre midfielder, playing to the fullback, who then bounces the ball back to the attack midfielder, looking for them then to open out. So can we start to get our run wide? Get our run wide. Where's the at fullback going to go? They were then playing to the attack midfielder, who's going to meet the ball on. It could be a first time pass depending on where the run is. Take it into here, they might entice the fullback uh, to come in inside, so leave more room out here, or they could stay here. So then it's all about the pace, can we get in behind? And then we're going to get that run from the fullback to get into here. As soon as that run's played, okay, our striker and our attack midfielder. What we want from our striker here is, is that when the centre midfielder plays into the centre midfielder here to create a bit of space, can we pull out, okay, around the back? So we're already on the move, we're getting our central, getting, getting in central here. We've played into here, okay, now we've got our attack midfielder making the run. Then they've got the option to go front or back post, okay. And then we've got our run from the centre attack midfielder helping that as well. So they might come into here to leave the back post there for the attack midfielder. Or even, or even on the edge, depending on what the cross is going to be. Again, we want them following in. And we want a nice ball in from the winger. So it might be right down to the byline and it's a cutback or they might be meeting it inside to just fizz the ball across, depending on where it is. So we want the fullback to judge, judge the speed that the ball's coming in, judge where the ball is going to be, you know, how many touches they're going to take, are they going to play first time, having a look up to see where the runs are. Because if they're going to play first time, but the striker's not going to be in the area where they want the ball to go, then they're going to have to take the touch. Okay, but we don't want to slow down too much. When the play is finished, again, centre attack midfielder becomes the striker, centre midfielder into attack midfielder, Striker joins the back of the queue. The fullback, who was acting as a defender, will be ready to go. And the fullback, who's just crossed, will be in here acting as a defender. Okay, so we don't want them tackling, we just want them to be shadowing, okay, to force um, the movement from the fullback and also from the attacking midfielder. We will now move into our final animation for this part of the session before moving on to this week's four corner model. Okay, so now we're moving into this week's four corner model. Starting off with technical and tactical, uh, one of the main things is timing of our runs. Okay, so timing of our runs as a striker, as the attack midfielder, as the fullback. If we're a fullback and we're already going before the players even receive the ball, then in a game we're going to get followed quite easily. It's easy for the players to read. We can do our double movements, so at the end they're coming in short to then go long. Okay, so make sure that we're timing it so when the players receive the ball and they're taking the touch and they're just about to get their head up, that's when we're making our move. Okay, so same for the strikers as well. When the fullback's making that run to meet the ball, okay, now we're going to go into the area where we want to go. So make sure we're not in there too early, because if we are in there too early and the ball comes to what comes to us, it's harder to adapt to it as well. Okay, whereas if we run onto the ball, we can get more pace on the finish and more pace on the cross as well. And also, if we're also on the move a bit later, um, when the ball is about to come in, it means we can adapt if the ball changes direction as well. Whereas if we're standing still, we're a bit too static, it's harder to adapt be flat-footed, okay, and if the ball goes somewhere else, it's likely we're not going to get it. Good delivery, okay, so that's the main thing we're looking for from our crosses, okay. So when we're looking at it, with the, with the full-backs, we're making sure that we're looking at where the players are going to be, okay, what area of the box we're aiming for, so what type of cross do we want to put in, okay. If we're meeting the ball and, it's on, and we're trying to cut it back, it's going to be low, it's going to be fizzed, okay. If somebody's making a run to the back post, maybe a bit more lofted, okay, so you might want to take a bit more pace out of it. Okay, but a bit more loft on the ball. Obviously, again, looking at who you who, who you're playing with. You know, if you're, if you're training with 
a small attack midfield and a small striker. Okay, they're gonna want it on the floor in case of finish. Might be maybe a player here who's six foot four and he will like the ball in the air. Okay, so judging who you're playing with, but making sure we've got a good delivery all the time. Body position. So our body position for our strikers is in a game we want to be able to see the back, uh, the, the number of the defender. Okay, so we're up against our centre back, so we want to be able to see where the ball's coming from, see the goal, and make it difficult for the centre back or the full back, whoever we're up against, okay, by staying a couple of yards off them, being able to see the back of their shirt, okay, because if they're focusing on the cross, got to maybe they might have a, they might be have a closed body, might have an open body, but you should be able to see the back of the shirt, okay, because that then means if you run, okay, they're not going to see it. Okay, you're going to get that split second to get ahead of them, in front of them, or getting behind. So if the ball goes over the head, you've got a chance to finish. Okay, same with our uh, fullbacks having an open body to receive the ball to go forward. Okay, with our centre attack midfielders as well. Okay, when we're trying to open out to pass as well, making sure that it's quick because if our body position is closed and we've got to take an extra touch, the play is too slow. Okay, we want it to be high tempo. Okay, so these things like the body position are important for that to happen. And then finally, finally. Finishing first time, when the ball comes into the box, okay, not taking touches, okay, not dwelling on the ball. When the ball comes in, right, I know I'm going to volley it first time, hitting the ball, okay, you've got more chance of scoring, okay, take the power off the ball, take the speed off it, okay, and finish it. Same with the header, same if it's on the floor as well. And if we miss and the keeper saves it, we've got a chance to follow in. If it hits the post, hits the bar, we've got a chance to follow in, okay, so making sure we finish first time. In terms of the psychological corner, awareness. So awareness is, a, is being aware of the players' runs this week. Okay, so the centre midfielders with the full-backs, the full-backs with the strikers. Okay, so always making sure we're getting our head up to see where the players are. So we're not just getting our head down, putting the ball in, going, oh, it was a great ball, but the players were five yards further back, so they could have done with a cut back. Okay, or you go to cut it back and the players are in the box waiting for a more lofted ball in. Okay, or a ball to the front post in between the goalkeeper and the six-yard box. So having that awareness to see where players are. Confidence, so confidence with our crossing and finishing, especially when we're doing lots of repetitions as well. So if we make a, a cross and it doesn't quite go where we want it to, it's fine, it's okay. Having that confidence, that self-belief to go, right, that was still a good ball, okay, didn't quite go where we wanted it to go, but the, it was a good chance to do it, okay, so maybe the players might read next time where that ball's going to go, all right. Decision making, so with our runs again, so going back into the timing, okay. Going back into finishing first time, okay, so making sure we're running at the right time, making sure we're meeting the ball, okay, when it's coming towards us, not being there already. And then with our finishing, looking at where the goalkeeper is, okay, kind of just slide the ball into that corner, kind of drill it into the, near, into the near post, but making sure we're making quick, decisive decisions. Looking at the physical corner, a lot of focus is on speed this week, speed to get the ball, pace on the crosses, okay, because we're playing, if we're trying to fizz the ball into the box, I'm just playing it just across the floor, inside of the foot, and it's just bobbling along. It's not great, okay? And the chances are, when the defender's there, they're gonna get it. If the ball's fizzed in low, okay, maybe just off the ground or on the ground, but fizzing across, there's a chance that the defenders, if they're there, are gonna swipe the ball. So we're not gonna get it. The defenders might swipe it into their own net, miscontrol it, it comes out to us, okay? So what we wanna see there is, is that, that the, uh, the crosses have got a lot of pace on it, the passes into the fullbacks have as well, so they can meet it and, fin and play in first time. Okay, so that goes into what we're talking about, well, tempo as well. So we're looking at a high tempo, so we need the pace on the ball to be quick so that we can do it as well. Quick movement, okay, so making sure that when we are moving, we're accelerating quickly. Okay, we're getting into that space. Okay, we're not dilly dallying, we're covering the ground quickly, which we speak about defensively, but it's also um, in an attacking way as well. Got to that, cover that ground to get into the space to meet the ball. Okay, because if we're too slow, the ball will go out. We might have to curve our run to then get to the ball, and it just causes an inconvenience and slows the play down. And then finally, our social corner, communication. Okay, so where do you want the ball? Okay, so if I'm, an, if, I'm an, if I'm a striker and I can see that the fullback's got his head up, simple point in front post or back post or yes here to me, okay, little things like that. Okay, same with the fullback as well, it might be underlap or overlap, okay, so it might be played in front to feet, things like that. Just simple basic information to give teammates a hand if they're unsure of where they're going to pass the ball. And then obviously that ties into the teamwork, okay, so in our teamwork we want lots of praise, lots of support. You know, for players on the ball who are playing, who are doing the crossing, for the lads who are finishing, you know, if they, if they miss or if they score, you know, give them um, that, that confidence, then get do it again, okay? That comes from us as a coach as well, giving the players lots of support, even if it's the centre midfielders, playing that switch of play, okay? Because a 40 yard pass, trying to do it first time can be quite daunting for some people as well. So making sure that we're giving them then confidence to go and do it. And if they make a mistake, they make a mistake. It's okay, it's fine. We can do it again and we can work on the technique and making it better. 
Moving into part three of this week's session, we're now moving, moving into a small side of the game, which is focusing on crossing and finishing. So what we've got for our setup for this part of the session, we've got 30 yards of depth total, okay? No changes in anything there, just total depth from here to here. Okay, so we've got two goals now, so this is where we're looking at our two goalkeepers, okay? So what we want to see is, obviously, if you have a parent or a coach, you can go on goal, great. If not, obviously, we can put the areas in the goal to try and score. Now we're going to have two floaters on the outside that are going to be crosses for the team in possession. And we're going to have a 5v5 in the middle. So in terms of our, uh, our width, sorry, we've got 20 yards of width centrally and 5 yards either side. So we've got a 30 by 30 box. So if we're looking at crossing, it's become um, a bit of an art over the last couple of years crossing. If you look at teams like Man City and Liverpool, a lot of their goals come from crosses. Okay, And it's not just hopeless balls into the box, it's aim crosses. So Manchester City looks to, look to get the ball into the byline and cut it back. Or they have the great delivery of Kevin De Bruyne right across into the six-yard box for players to score. We see lot, lot, a lot of late runs into the back post. Okay, we look at Liverpool, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andrew Robertson as well. Fantastic delivery from deep areas, from areas close to the goal as well. Brilliant at going on the underlap and overlap to create space for other players as well. So when we're talking about that underlap and overlap, it's not just across the ball. It can be create space for a winger to cut inside and finish, especially when they have that front three of Salah, Mane, Firmino, all being able to get into the box, okay, all having the ability to finish, okay, so having that, then we've got to practice that ability of, can we put that ball on a sixpence, okay, a few times a game, because it's very hard to do, so a lot of practice needs to go in to get the, to, to work on our technique across and to get the ball into the right areas, so when we're working on different parts of, um, in the session this week so we're looking at building the ball through midfield to get it wide to score using our wingers to play the ball in to then play a ball into the box you know combining with the fullback and the attack midfielder so different ways to create space for the fullback to find a bit of space then to cross and finish so whatever team's in possession has got both fullbacks okay so on one side <clears throat> you might have the right footer here so strong going here and on this side, you might have your left footer. Okay, so you might have one team, you know, when they're attacking one way, we're working on the, def the fullback's weak foot as well. So the ball's going to be played into one of the teams in the middle from the coach. They can complete a few passes. You can set as many passes as you want before they play out wide. Don't really want to be too many, okay? It might be hard then to get the ball wide anyway. When the ball goes wide, it doesn't have to be right. We all run into the box and try and score from across. No. So we want them to play wide when they think that, right, we've created a bit of space in here, okay? Now we're gonna play into the fullback. It was on a maximum of three touches, by the way. Maximum three. Okay, so it might be one touch to drive, cut to one goal, okay, and play in. Or it might be, oh, first touch has come in, tough one to thingy. Now I'm gonna make my decision where I'm gonna go to go forward and then look to cross the ball. Then we're looking to get our bodies in the box. So when we're speaking about the defenders, so the defenders both in here, okay, and I'm the striker, Okay, I don't want to be here with the defender. It's easy for him to see me. It's easy for him to defend. I'm flat-footed, okay? And he's, he's going to be able to come out and attack the ball. Whereas I'm back here and I'm a few yards away from him. I can see the back of his shirt, okay? Which means to me, he's got to look over his shoulder to see me every time. So if he's focusing on the ball, he doesn't know if I'm going to come in here. Or if he thinks the ball's going to back, go back, he might come back here and I might take the run from post, okay? So we don't want to stand too close to the defenders, okay? Time your runs, so then you give the option for the crosses to go, I could put that right in there for him to attack. Or I could cut it back for him to attack. Or he's going to make that run to the front post. Okay, so then if we make the run to the front post, we've got the chance for the other player, who's also doing the same thing, to get the run on the fullback in here. Whereas if you're staying back here, it's and then, then you make the run, you're going to get someone following you. Okay, so it's important to relay onto the players that don't be staying too close to the defenders, okay? Time your runs, okay? So you've got the chance to adapt to where the cross is going to go and you give yourself more options for it. When the cross goes into the box, if we do score, okay, great stuff, okay? You'll get the ball back again from the coach. If the keeper saves it, he'll just play out to the other team. If it goes out, okay, we'll do a corner from the crosses, okay? So if it goes out, that team will get a corner, but if the keeper saves it, they'll then play uh, into the booze. If the ball goes wide out here, coach will play into the opposite team, okay, nice and simple. And then obviously, um, if the players lose the ball in here, the other team just instantly gets possession. If the ball goes out here, so if the Blues get it here and they win the ball and it goes out, okay, Reds then get the ball, playing from either the coach or the Greens can throw it in so we can see some transitions. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session.
Thanks for watching this week's session. For more content, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The links will be in the description below. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.